today's lab, we are going to dehydrate cyclohexanol, which is a secondary alcohol, to form cyclohexene, which is will contain the carbon-carbon double bond, so an alkene. And we're going to do this by having a mixture uh, of cyclohexanol. I have 10 mils of cyclohexanol and 5 mils of 9 molar sulfuric acid. And this is a type of E1 mechanism. Uh, and usually heat is needed to facilitate this reaction. So we're going to uh, turn the heating metal on in just a second, but I have a mixture of the cyclohexanol and the 9 molar sulfuric acid. And what happens during that mechanism is that the OH group of the cyclohexanol is protonated. That becomes a good leaving group. It will leave and form a carbocation. There's two routes that carbocation can take. It could possibly react with the sulfuric acid, the um, bisulfate ion, if you will, uh, to uh, introduce the bisulfate ion onto the molecule. That would be a substitution reaction, like an SN1. Or what could happen is that once that leaving group leaves the protonated OH group, then the water could come in and take off one of the hydrogens uh, alpha hydrogen of the cyclohexanol. And when that happens, then we will form a carbon-carbon double bond. That's your elimination reaction. And every time you have a substitution elimination reaction, they always compete with each other. Those steps are at equilibrium. So for today's lab, usually heat facilitates that more of an elimination mechanism rather than the substitution. So one way that we can make that reaction go more to the right, if it is in equilibrium, is to distill off our cyclohexane when it forms. So we're using a fractional distillation. We're going to start heating this, and I will say that it's important not to heat it on high initially. We know it takes a while for this to go up through the fractionating column and then down the condensing column. But if you heat this too high, Sometimes a polymerization reaction will happen and you end up with this black, tarry mess, if you will. So I'm going to start off maybe about medium-high heat. Uh, this will probably turn kind of an orange, then it will kind of turn of a green, and it probably will turn some of a black, but hopefully we can get enough of the cyclohexene to come over to do some chemical tests to see if we did form a carbon-carbon double bond. So I'm going to turn this on. Uh, and again, anytime you're doing a fraction, uh, fractional distillation, then we more, more likely want to uh, cover this with aluminum foil. I will do that. Just wanted to see, let you see what it looked like beforehand. We've already done a fractional distillation. The only difference is we're actually making a compound in this one and to purify it by distilling it over. We like to collect anything that's below 90 degrees. It is possible that some of that water may co-distill over. Uh, with that. Um, so we'll collect anything below, let's say, 90 degrees, and then we'll work up what we collect in our receiving flask here. We'll probably let the distillation continue until we get about five mils of, uh, that's left inside this round bottom flask. Once we see about five mils left, then we'll cut that off and work it up uh, further. One other thing that I'm going to do uh, in addition to what you can set up here Typically, it's not a bad idea to chill this in a solvent uh, when you're collect, or excuse me, to chill this in an ice water bath as you're collecting the cyclohexane. So I'm going to go ahead and put a beaker with some ice in it uh, on this ring stand. And when I do that, we'll come back and let you see how that looks as well. And I'll have this already uh, wrapped in the full paper uh, also. I went ahead and insulated with the uh, aluminum foil on the fractionating column, also covered the top of the um, distilling flask, and also covered the steel head and part of the thermometer adapter as well. Um, no really reason to pull this down, it's already being chilled by the water as well as the air inside the view hood. So we have that stirring, I've got the uh, Variact on, so this is going to be our heat source, we've got stirring going on here. Uh, I went ahead and put a beaker containing ice underneath the receiving flask. Uh, that ice will probably melt some before we start distilling and I can replenish that as necessary. 
One thing I always like to do if I do have an ice water bath that I'm using in any type of apparatus, especially if it's some type of distillation, uh, notice I've got a ring that's a clamp to the ring stand and on top of that I put a, just a piece of wire gauze. But I also like to just put a ring around the beaker or whatever my ice water bath is in just because if something were to hit this, I'd rather for this to hit the ring than to fall over and break on the top of the, the fused hood surface. So really it's now as a wait and see game. I'm going to periodically check my water still coming out. Um, and then I'll probably heat this. I've got this set and again each variac is different. I have this around five uh, and I want to kind of heat it somewhat gradually. And then I'll probably have to eventually turn it up too high. Uh, or close to that, just so that we can collect the cyclohexane as it comes over. Uh, just collected our first drop around 67, 68 degrees. Uh, we've got the ice water bath here, chilling that receiving flask. Um, you know, by looking at the steel pot or distillation flask, there has been a color change. Uh, temperature now is still around 67. We're gonna let this continue until about five milliliters are left inside the distilling flask. Um, and then we'll work up our product on the right hand side in the receiving flask. 